Yes guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome to the George Benson Football Channel and today is the long awaited, I say long awaited, it's a q and A. I've not done a Q&A on YouTube for about a year or so, so I thought with the George Benson Football Channel being about five months old, I thought we might as well do a little Q&A so that you guys can get to know the things that we don't talk about on a daily basis or you wanted to know from watching me on a daily basis. However, if you're not yet subscribed to the George Benson Football Channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button, bell notifications, the football is back this weekend we've got a lot of matches coming up soon with Chelsea so I thought that you know whilst we're still at the international break phase of things like it's a bit too early for a Man City preview that'll be coming out in a couple of days Premier League predictions a bit early for that as well Monday night chilled video little Q&A so I asked for questions over on Twitter and I thought I would just go through about 11 10 or 11 of them in this video today the first one of which is from SE gaming number four are you ever gonna do fans react but in real life Life, like AFTV because everyone would like to see that with you and 100% Chelsea so in terms of like the fan cam stuff it's something that I've always said when I made this channel to myself that I didn't want to do I didn't want it to be kind of like always having to just wait for fans outside the ground kind of thing I wanted to have my own kind of thing that I did that wasn't just a copy of fan cams I understand why they're popular I understand why people would watch them but for me it's not really the style of content that I want to make so I'll leave it to the people that are doing it. So I'm not really gonna be doing Chelsea fans react with fan cams, but I do wanna get into having people that I'm friends with being on the channel more, more collaborations, more voices and discussions as opposed to just me blabbing on every single day. So hopefully that answers your question. The next question is from out of context Irish guy. What is the best Chelsea game you've been, you've been? or that you witnessed as a Chelsea fan in my lifetime. Gotta be that Ajax game, to be honest. I know it's obviously easier to speak about a game that's a bit more fresh in the memory, as opposed to looking all the way back into the past. There was something about that Ajax game. There were so many different elements of that game, which really made it such an exciting occasion. The fact that we were 4-1 down, managed to get the game back to 4-4. VAR, even though it was the correct decision, it still annoyed me, but the whole process of the different fluctuations in emotions during that game was something else. It was absolutely extraordinary to be at the bridge and to walk away having come from three goals down against the European semi-finalists yet to still feel as though you could have won it's very difficult to summarize in any kind of in any kind of concise way how that felt at the time and even now looking back on that game it had a little bit of everything red cards plenty of goals VAR decisions that was modern football at its finest the next question is Victor Nasland how's it going for you in F PL. So I actually haven't looked at my fantasy Premier League for a while. So we're just going to screen record. Three, two, one. My screen is now recording. We're going to take a look on the app. Tilda's my background before you start thinking I've got other women on my phone background. My last points were 81 points, which is pretty decent. Christian Pulisic got me eight. Vardy was my captain. Always got to stick with Jamie Vardy, even against the big teams. It's quite embarrassing. If we look in my own league, there's about 5,000 of you guys in my league. And uh, at the moment, Super Frank's Osh 11 is number one, and Yashvi's 11 is number two. I'm 1,589th, so that is uh, not ideal. But I did make some changes, I think, after that game week. What I've gone with is I've taken Pulisic out, and I've put Mason Mount in. So lots of away games, and I'm probably going to have to get rid of Kevin De Bruyne because I don't want to have... Have City and Chelsea players in there and even though City are the favourites for that game I probably still want to back the Chelsea boys so I'll probably get rid of De Bruyne but that's how it's looking right now. The next question is from Jay Tramadol okay what is my top five worst Chelsea signings of the Roman era? This is an interesting one this because there's been a lot of signings there's been a lot of bad signings there's also been a lot of signings that have been portrayed in the media as bad yet they've not actually been that bad at all for example ES ESPN were having a bit of an off day the other day when they tweeted about Fernando Torres being the worst Chelsea signing in the past 10 years. But quite frankly, it did exactly as it should have done by basically just getting a reaction from Chelsea fans, which is what they probably wanted. So top five worst signings. Adrian Mutu is number one. I mean, De Giza wasn't exactly firing on all cylinders. And as a footballer, he didn't really cover himself in very much glory. So we do remember Adrian Mutu. He is going down as one of the worst. Matija Kesman, that was never really a recipe made in heaven. That didn't go down as well as we thought it would. We bought him in thinking he was going to bag us a ton of goals. It never really worked out. So Matthias Kesman, Danny Drinkwater, 
Sadly, I mean, it's not worked out for him at Chelsea. And we've also got to remember the price tag that we've spent on him, 40 million, is, is just an astronomical sum of money. You've then got Bakayoko, who I think is kind of in the same boat. We've never really seen him reach any kind of potential for the money in which we spent on him. And then the fifth one, which some of you may find a little bit surprising, but since we've seen him come out and make comments about his time at Chelsea, there was something that never sat well with me with Alvaro Morata, considering the money we spent in him and the, we did give him the benefit of the doubt, putting him in as Chelsea's number nine striker. We gave him all the opportunities, but quite frankly, I don't think he ever really grabbed that opportunity with both hands now that he's basically saying how he couldn't wait to get out of London it's not really the kind of comments you want to see and hear from a striker that we did support you know people think that we gave him a hard time I wouldn't say that we did I think that we had expectations of Morata having come from Real Madrid and Juventus and we did see signs and sparks that he was going to be able to deliver for us but I never liked his attitude and I certainly don't like it now the next question is from Baran Babur underscore with a smiley faces his emoji nice and positive where do I see this Chelsea team in five years now I said it in a video the other day I said that within the next 10 years, I think this Chelsea team will win as many Premier League titles as everybody else. There's many reasons as to why I think this could happen. A lot of them are down to the foundations that we've got going on right now. Also, if you compare the powerhouses in English football right now, I do feel as though Jurgen Klopp isn't going to stay at Liverpool for that many more years. I think if they win the Premier League this season, we've seen, and Klopp's come out and said this himself, that if he's involved in football, he's got to give 110%, yet it's something that is very difficult to maintain from a mental level. Jurgen Klopp has hinted at taking a sabbatical from football, and I think if Liverpool, which they probably will, win the Premier League this season, we might see that within the next three years. You've also got Pep Guardiola at Manchester City, and I feel as though once he's got close to winning the Champions League, or maybe one more season where they don't win the title, or one more Premier League title, I just don't see Guardiola staying at City for any more than three years either. You look at what Chelsea have got going on right now with the young players that are already very talented with the ability to spend money to strengthen moving forward. I think in terms of foundations and setup, I think Chelsea have got it as good as any moving forward over the next 10 years. In the next five years, I think we will start to see this Chelsea team progress even further. I think we'll start going towards the latter stages of the Champions League again, like we used to do many years ago on a consistent basis. I think we'll win at least one Premier League in the next five years. I think five years plus... It's very difficult to make any kind of predictions in football. My whole statement about Chelsea winning more Premier Leagues in the next 10 years is more so based off of thinking that others might not than it is genuine confidence in Chelsea being able to move forward and win in the next 10 years. If that makes any sense whatsoever, it's very difficult to make long-term predictions in football. Things change all the time. The stability we've got right now so soon after so many periods of instability, I do feel as though that could be a long-term thing now at Chelsea, where it might not necessarily be Frank Lampard in charge, but the playing personnel, it is a brand new era. It's a fresh start. It's very young. The average age of this Chelsea team is extremely young. They're only going to get better. We're probably going to strengthen by buying players too. So I think over the next five years, we'll win at least one Premier League, maybe two. That's a bold statement, I know. And we could potentially see a Champions League final in there as well. I've shot myself in the foot with that one. Next question is from Jude H69793623. I wonder if any of that is part of your phone number. Is YouTube your main job? There were quite a few questions with this kind of orientation. Yes, it is. These videos have kind of become my main income now. And uh, it's normally like a taboo subject for people on YouTube and social media to talk about it. But quite frankly, I think we've got quite a good relationship going on here on this channel between you and I. The adverts that you guys see on this video, and yes, I did just select to put one in when I just said that a second ago, just to kind of prove a point. Those adverts pay me money, which is a weird thing to think about, but it's the truth. YouTube takes 50% of all revenue on ads on YouTube videos. So the other 50% is what I receive in my pocket at the end of every month. And then I get paid on like the 23rd or 24th of the month. I also work with brands doing campaigns and brand sponsorships, partnerships, all that kind of stuff. For example, the video I did with David Louise was sponsored by BT Sport. So in terms of making a living, I do stuff like that to go along with the ad revenue that these videos make. So although it might be annoying sometimes that you see an advert, even though no one's charging you to watch this content, it's kind of like that balancing thing where if those adverts weren't on the videos, 
I wouldn't be able to constantly make the videos because I'd have to go out and get a real job. That's just the, the, the meat and potatoes of this whole conversation, really. So, of course, I'm very grateful that you guys watch my videos. I didn't think this football channel would actually be a sustainable platform for me this quickly. I thought it was going to be one of those things where I'd probably have to do it for like a year until I actually started to get paid for it from YouTube. But you guys are loving it. So for that, I'm very grateful. Thank you for all of your support. And as long as you guys keep watching the videos, I will be able to keep making them every single day. So yeah, hopefully that gives you a good answer to this question. I make these videos and sometimes I do brand partnerships on Instagram, Twitter, and also sponsored content as well. And the Manchester City vlog that you guys will see at the weekend, I'm actually going to stay in Warrington for the weekend and I'm gonna be working with Penta Hotels, who I've actually had a relationship with for over a year. So that kind of thing, hopefully that all makes sense. Lucas Bengston says, where's the place to go for pre-match pints? Well, I really like going to the Cock Tavern, which is about a three or four minute walk from Stamford Bridge. It's not as busy as Magettigan's, which is basically opposite the Fulham Broadway station. They've also got a nice standing area outside, which is basically a smoking area, but it's just like a, an extension out the back of the pub. It's where I like to go for a pre-match pint if I'm having a couple of beers before. Anyway, moving swiftly on to Ellie Griffin, who is your all-time favorite Chelsea player? Uh, it just so happens to be our current manager. Frank Lampard has always been my favourite Chelsea player. My dad did some work, my dad's a builder, he did some work for the kit man or someone who was very good friends with the Chelsea kit man at the time and he actually happened to get me a Frank Lampard signed shirt. It just said to George, best wishes and then Frank signed it. So yeah, that was one of the old Fly Emirates shirts, you know, the white one with the blue stripe. One of my favourite ever Chelsea kits actually. Just the way that he scored so many goals for Chelsea, the way that he clearly absolutely adores Chelsea and now he is our manager. It's something that still doesn't sink in on a daily basis. Frank is the Chelsea manager. I think it will eventually, but probably when we win the first trophy and we see Azpilicueta or Jorginho go up and lift the trophy and then we give it to the manager and Frank's just like lifting another trophy in a Chelsea shirt again. I hope Frank Lampard puts on a Chelsea shirt. Imagine if Frank put on a Chelsea shirt when we actually win a trophy to go up and collect it. That would just be the best thing I've ever seen. But yeah, Frank's my favourite. Didier is up there as well. Dennis Wise, Gianfranco Zola, all of those guys probably in my top five. And of course, John Terry as well. Lawrence has just turned up. We're going to play football tonight in Shoreditch, which is going to be fun. Ever been to India? Says Rushi7282. Just had a question that India has a population of 1.3 billion, but has no player in the top league or club. My thoughts. So I've noticed in the comments, looking through my YouTube analytics, that India is a growing population for people watching the GBFC videos. So welcome to everybody from India. 1.3 billion is a lot of people. And I would really like to go to India to do something with football, just to see how the sport is growing, comparing it to like cricket, which we all know has been a hugely popular sport in India. Football is definitely something that's growing. So it's definitely a market that is definitely growing from a spectator standpoint globally. But in terms of the players, and whether or not there's going to be players that make it in top flight football across Europe or the rest of the world, I don't know. I think the more the sport grows amongst the population, the more that the interest is going to be, the more that young people will start to kick ball around the street. That is when things will start to improve. But at the moment, India probably won't be qualifying for the World Cup but there's definitely a narrative there in terms of where the sport is going in such a big country. Today's video has been kind of a different one where I've kind of been answering questions that aren't necessarily all oriented around Chelsea. Hopefully, it's given some of you that haven't been watching me for the last eight years on YouTube, which is how long I've been making YouTube videos. Hopefully, it's given some of you some ideas as to what kind of goes on behind the scenes. Thank you guys for watching. There will be regular Chelsea content back tomorrow. Just wanted to do like a little Q&A because we haven't done one here on the channel yet. And even though, as I said, I've been making YouTube videos for eight years. I've had various other channels as well. A lot of the people watching are also new and have never watched any of my previous stuff. So I thought it'd be a good little idea whilst it's an international break and we're still getting back into the swing of the Premier League action to do a little Q&A and let you guys know a little bit more about how this thing works and what we've got going on. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. City is now five days away. Never been more excited. Genuinely, the next two games, I cannot wait. The weather in Valencia is going to be 22 degrees. Phenomenal scenes. I'll see you all later. Goodbye.